KUAM News Headlines is presented by Calvo's Insurance, a legacy of trust, serving Micronesia since 1938. Matson and the Adahi Tunnel Program. Cars Plus, home of Guam's first and only lifetime limited powertrain warranty. McDonald's of Guam, I'm loving it. And King's Restaurants, always open, always local, and serving up favorites for over 40 years. Coming up on Primetime, Guam nears 100 COVID-related deaths and four people have passed away within a span of the last 24 hours. Plus, two DOC inmates are hospitalized at GMH after their symptoms worsen. And the Guam Election Commission prepares for tomorrow's congressional runoff election. Off day and good evening, I'm Adriana Cotero. We start off this evening's newscast on a somber note as the Joint Information Center confirmed four COVID-19 related casualties today, bringing the total to 98. The 95th COVID-19 related fatality occurred at the U.S. Naval Hospital at approximately 6.55 p.m. last night. The patient was a 72-year-old male with underlying conditions that were further compounded by COVID-19. He was admitted to USNH on October 31st and was a known positive case. The 96th occurred at the Guam Memorial Hospital at approximately 10.25 p.m. last night. The patient was a 50-year-old male and tested positive for COVID-19 upon admission on November 4th. Guam's 97th COVID-19 related fatality occurred at GMH around 1 a.m. The patient was a 64-year-old female with underlying conditions that were further compounded by COVID-19. She was admitted to GMH on October 30th and was a known positive case. And the 98th occurred at the Guam Regional Medical City this morning. The patient was a 65-year-old female with underlying conditions that were further compounded by COVID-19. She was admitted to GRMC on November 16th and tested, pos po tested positive upon admission. Governor Lou Leon Guerrero is saying, may their families accept our deepest condolences and sympathies. She adds, too many souls have been lost to this virus and too many people have been left to grieve. Our vigilance and our commitment to protecting each other are, are what will get us through this. As for the latest numbers, since Sunday night, out of 619 samples run through various clinics and labs, 156 returned positive. According to the JIC, there have been 6,121 officially reported cases of COVID-19, with 2,085 cases in active isolation and 3,942 not in active isolation. The COVID census at the Guam Memorial Hospital currently shows 65 COVID patients hospitalized. According to Hospital Administrator Lillian Posada, 16 of those patients are currently under an ICU level of care, with nine patients on ventilator support. Of the total COVID patients hospitalized, hospitalized nine are currently in recovery at the COVID isolation facility in Barragata Heights. Posadas also confirmed the arrival and departure of some of their off-island staff. Over the weekend, we received uh, three additional, um, actually five additional RNs uh, have arrived. One, a uh, couple of them at the ICU level of uh, care experience, um, and ED emergency uh, department experience, and also progressive care unit experience, you know, with telemetry uh, experience. So we also lost uh, um, several of them. Uh, they've had family emergencies, so they've had to go back uh, up, you know, to the mainland. <laughs> Yeah. So, this is just replacing uh, the ones that have had to leave on emergency. Posadas added that they are watching the increase of COVID positive cases in the recent construction and corrections clusters and will be setting up their second blue med tent should the need arise. Another 140 H2 workers at Cortec International have tested positive for COVID-19. Public Health has been coordinating with them and another major contractor, Black Construction, to test all of their employees following separate major outbreaks at their respective worker barracks. Nestor LeConto reports. Between Cortec and Black Construction, nearly 500 foreign H2 workers have been infected. The spread is likely due to the close quarters within their housing barracks, but also possibly contact at the various construction sites, public health spokesperson Janella Carrero. We are seeing um, that, that there may be a possible link between Black Construction and Cortec. Um, you know, they, they do do some um, projects together. There may be some um, subcontracting work as well. And that's not uncommon between uh, in within the construction industry. Public Health released a contractor clearance checklist over the weekend for other construction companies who can meet minimum requirements for a clearance. And in fact, a handful have already been cleared. Because, you know, there are smaller construction companies or construction companies that don't have barracks, don't have H2 workers, um, may have not had any um, projects or subcontracts with Black Construction or with Cortec. Um, 
and may not have been affected by any of this. She says they're also working closely with the military to clear at least some projects with workers who aren't connected to the Cortec or Black clusters. Carrera says they don't want to delay any work if they can help it. We realize how critical uh, a role they play in, in the economy. She adds that most, if not all, of the H2 workers who've tested positive were already here before the pandemic started. For Guam's News Network, I'm Nestor Leconto. Keeping a close eye on the Department of Corrections' efforts to control and monitor the virus outbreak. Early this morning, a couple prisoners' COVID symptoms have worsened. Two Department of Corrections inmates were transferred to the Guam Memorial Hospital. According to Director Joe Carbolito, the two inmates who had tested positive for COVID-19 began experiencing bad symptoms and were transported as per their protocol based on their medical staff assessments. DOC is working with the Department of Public Health on contact tracing and the close monitoring of inmates detainees that are in isolation. Additionally, they are currently retesting additional inmates in post-9 after they started exhibiting symptoms of COVID-19. Carbolito adds that a purchase order for the renovation of the dome structure at the Manilao compound was approved. Renovations are needed so that it can be used as an additional isolation facility. Overall, 93 inmates and detainees in Manila and Hagania have tested positive, while more than 44 officers and civilian staff have also been infected with the virus. DOC, in the meantime, has established an information center for families with relatives at the prison. The number to call is 734-4016. The information center will be available Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. According to GMH Administrator Lillian Posadas, hospitalized inmates are placed and monitored in the blue medical tents. There's always room for improvement, and when it comes to how our government is handling the virus, the old adage still rings true. Peter Santos reports. The COVID-19 pandemic has cast a shadow over everyday life for most of 2020, and sadly it seems like it'll be a while before we see a significant silver lining. As we approach the end of the year with surges in COVID-positive cases and a hospital resorting to putting patients in the gift shop or in tents, it's important to reflect on how we've been handling this virus so far. Chairman of the Governor's Physicians Advisory Group, Dr. Hoa Wen. It's overwhelmed uh, for any agency, as you know, including public health, to handle it. And um, they are adjusting. Um, uh, they are uh, trying, but still, we're still overwhelmed. Dr. Wen says that technology will be the key in controlling the spread of the virus moving forward. We're still pushing um, public health and, and, and getting to a digital platform rather than everything manual. Uh, so that way, the um, everything can happen faster. Um, the isolation, the initial contact tracing still kind of lag behind quite a bit. And that's something that um, it will have to improve um, a lot as we go further to this, um, um, to this pandemic, you know, uh, until the vaccine come. So there's a lot of room for improvement. If uh, we don't do that um, soon, um, um, we will get way, way behind. Especially in the age of technology, skepticism and a fear of misused personal information leave many people hesitant to voluntarily participate in the implementation of COVID-related apps. But Dr. Wen says that they work if people actually use it. The Sarah Alert and the yeah, COVID-1 uh, um, apps are, are helping. Um, on, a, on the symptom monitoring, okay, and um, helping on the uh, contact tracing. But again, you, especially with Guam COVID uh, app, you have to have a certain amount of people mm -hmm. in Guam that download before it can work effectively. Right. While the apps do their job at symptom monitoring and contact tracing, Dr. Wen says that the pace at which a positive test result can be informed to isolate and how fast contact tracing can begin, that's where the switch to digital will make the difference. But at the end of the day, the most the Physicians Advisory Group can do? We will continue to push it you know, um, through the meetings. We can push through the media, make sure that that we have our voice heard. And, and again, it's advice that we give, and we cannot make it happen, though. I mean, it's, the, it's up to the power to be to make it happen and, and, and follow advice. Reporting for Guam's News Network, I'm Peter Santos. Who will be Guam's next congressman? Tyler Matsunani has a story on how the Guam Election Commission is preparing for the island's first runoff election and the tasks that will follow after. 
Federal law requires that the Guam Election Commission holds a runoff election 14 days after the general if a candidate did not acquire a voting percentage of 50 plus one. So far, over 5,000 people have casted their votes early for Dr. Robert Underwood and Congressman Michael St. Nicholas. GEC Executive Director Maria Pengalinen gives details on how the commission is preparing for tomorrow. Um, our precinct official coordinators just left to go look at to check out all the polling sites and make sure that the supplies and the equipment are handy and ready to go. As for homebound voters and those in quarantine and isolation, the GEC has already gone to GMH. However, Pangolina says they haven't had any calls from GRMC. She adds there are a few in the quarantine facility that called and they will service tonight. They will continue to service homebound voters in isolation tonight and tomorrow. From my last update, we haven't had a call from the isolation facility. So people in the isolation facility and the quarantine facility, we've left flyers with the coordinators there and um, they've called us. But the GEC's work doesn't end on Tuesday. They're also mandated to count all the provisional ballots within 10 work days of the general election, which will be Wednesday, November 18. In total, they've received 160 provisional ballots. We've gone through the process. Um, we've contacted some of the provisional vote voters that we can or that that could be that should be contacted. In our list of provisional voters, we have quite a few where they were uh, they were in the wrong voting district. Mm. So those will count except except for the district races or the mayoral and vice mayoral races. Wednesday, November 18 is the last day to receive off island ballots and Friday, November 20th is the deadline to turn in any complaints to the GEC. In addition, on Friday, they will also be doing a recount for the Jigo Village Mayor as well as the 6th and 7th place for the Guam Education Board. Pengalinen says we will be getting the certified final results then. All those that were registered for the general election, regardless if they voted or not, are qualified to vote in the runoff. Voters are reminded to bring a black pen, ID, and a mask. The 22 polling sites will be open tomorrow from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. Reporting for Guam's News Network, I'm Tyler Matanani. Stick around for more news here on Primetime. You're watching KUAM. Get going with GTA Prepaid Unlimited. It's easy to load. Simply press star 488 pound, send, select two on your screen, and then load. And with fast LTE data, you're able to quickly connect and share to your digital world. Plus, with reliable service, you're able to connect with loved ones whenever, wherever. GTA, we start with you. I'm Michael F. Cusa Nicholas, and I approve this message. Our public service has always been about building a future for Guam and for our children. This election, let's come out and vote for them. While we've all been through a lot over the years, typhoons, earthquakes, and now COVID-19, we've been able to get through these together. For more than 80 years, Cowboys Insurance has been protecting your homes, your businesses, and the health of your family. We are here today, and we'll be here tomorrow. There are better days ahead. Tomorrow's a new day filled with hope and choices. The possibilities of what we can achieve together are limitless. Let's continue to work together to ensure a brighter tomorrow for all of us. We are in the worst economic crisis of our lives. We're in the worst healthcare crisis in a hundred years. I've outlined a plan that takes full advantage of the military buildup to make it a local buildup, utilizing our local workers and companies. I've presented a viable plan to create a special immigration zone with the CNMI. It will increase visitor numbers and increase federal support of our crippled tourism industry. I will immediately diversify the economy, utilizing technology and resources 
research in areas like aquaculture, and information technology, and the establishment of mega data centers in Guam. But first, we must get people back to work and more federal pandemic relief funding. We don't need more exaggerated promises from the incumbent. We need honesty and integrity in our delegates' office. I am Robert Underwood, and I humbly ask you for your vote. And I approve this message. Si tu es ma'asi, maraming salaman po. KUAM News, winner of the 2020 Regional Edward R. Murrow Award for Excellence in Social Media. Advocates describe it as a small step forward in what will be a long road back to economic recovery. Senators today opened the November session with debate over a measure to slash a business licensing fee to help motivate entrepreneurs to open much needed new businesses. Nestor Lacanto reports. Author Senator Jim Moylan says the preferred structure for small businesses is the limited liability corporation because of the financial protections it provides to owners. The initial filing fees for LLCs across the U.S. range from as low as $40 to as high as $500. But on Guam, it's $1,000. This legislation is simple. It is a business-friendly measure. It's an opportunity for Guam to attract more LLC filings. And basically, if we can create reasonable filing fees, more LLCs will be filed on the island. But Senator Sabina Perez said she had reservations about who it would really help. They could be some of the largest corporations or businesses, uh, such as the Enrons of the world. And um, I think it's important to note that fact that LLCs somehow become conflated with small businesses. And I do understand the need to increase the economic activities of our island. But I think, uh, you know, we should take measured approaches in, in, in doing so. And um, for me, it's not very clear what the impacts of this would be. Our small businesses are our heroes of our economy, Madam Speaker. They are the job creators who drive the economy and make a huge contribution to our island's prosper prosperity. Our duty is to help prosper these small businesses to generate the taxes that we desperately need to support our government services. Especially during this time of COVID when we're wondering how many of these small businesses do still want to open their doors. The bill was successfully passed on to the third reading file for voting before the end of this session. For Guam's News Network, I'm Nestor Lecanto. As KUAM recently reported, President Trump announced his intent to nominate current Superior Court Judge Maria Senzon to the District Court of Guam. Senzon, former legal counsel to Governor Calvo, had practiced law for 17 years prior to her appointment to the Superior Court of Guam. In a press release from the Democratic Party chairperson, Sarah Thomas Nedadog gave a simple message of congratulations, calling her a daughter of Guam. The Republican Party praised her career, calling Senzon a woman of integrity who will bring her profound professionalism to the federal district court. Governor Leon Guerrero gave respect to the nomination and noted her inability to recommend a nomination, adding, quote, with the upcoming holiday recess, a Senate majority up for grabs, and a coming presidential transition, we hope that all critical decisions involving Guam are addressed deliberately and without the rush associated with an ongoing administ outgoing administration, unquote. The latest from Mark Torrey Jr.'s trial, the defense has rested its case and nothing further from the people. Here's more from Superior Court. The fate of Mark Torrey Jr. is one step closer to being left in the hands of the jury. Torrey faces negligent homicide and aggravated assault charges for the 2015 deadly shooting of fellow police officer Albert Piolo. This morning, the defense recalled last and final witness, Guam Police Department Officer John Edwards, to take the stand. Edwards was the responding cop wearing the body cam the night of the incident. Defense counsel Jay Ariola previously moved to disqualify Edwards' testimony to include the evidence of the body cam footage, arguing the officer's integrity by presenting information that he was terminated from the Phoenix Police Department prior to his hire at GPD. Attorney Ariola asked Edwards if he would assert his Fifth Amendment rights regarding questions related to his Phoenix PD employment history. Edwards responded with yes. On the other hand, Chief Prosecutor Basil Mellon had previously questioned the credibility of said termination documents. The court has ruled Edwards' records will be admitted as an exhibit. Closing arguments are expected to occur tomorrow morning at 9.30 a.m. In District Court News, Chief Judge Francis Hedinko Gatewood plans to issue a ruling on Kelvin John to Tau Tau sentencing tomorrow. The court is taking the matter under advisement and has asked for the latest DOC COVID-19 infection count. 
The continued sentencing hearing this morning was for Tatelto, who has pled guilty to count one of conspiracy to distribute meth. It was stated in court that the case involved more than 13 people with his counsel, Roland Mantononia, asking for a lesser sentence term. The defense argues Tatelto had minimal participation and was cooperative with the feds. Postal Inspector Richard Tracy testified on the cooperation performed by the defendant and support from his family. According to the plea agreement, in February 2018, the defendant agreed to receive two packages, which law enforcement removed approximately 223 grams of meth from and replaced with sham. The hearing concluded with Tatelto telling the court, I would like to say sorry for what I have done. I am sorry to my family and I want more help. Coming up, more prime time. Keep it here. Your community calendar is brought to you by Taco Bell. Whether it's your first meal or your fourth meal, we've got you covered. Taco Bell, live Moss. We are in the worst economic crisis of our lives. We're in the worst healthcare crisis in a hundred years. I've outlined a plan that takes full advantage of the military buildup to make it a local buildup, utilizing our local workers and companies. I presented a viable plan to create a special immigration zone with the CNMI. It will increase visitor numbers and increase federal support of our crippled tourism industry. I will immediately diversify the economy, utilizing technology and research in areas like aquaculture, information technology, and the establishment of mega data centers in Guam. But first, we must get people back to work and more federal pandemic relief funding. We don't need more exaggerated promises from the incumbent. We need honesty and integrity in our delegates' office. I am Robert Underwood, and I humbly ask you for your vote. And I approve this message. Si tu es ma'asi, maraming salamat po. Are you looking to save? Here at Cars Plus, it's Black Friday every day. You'll love our entire Hyundai SUV lineup, like the 2020 Hyundai Tucson, ranked best compact SUV by J.D. Power in 2020. Drive home in your new Tucson, starting as low as $158 per paycheck. Equipped with Guam's only lifetime powertrain warranty. That's right, there's only one place to shop for your SUV this November. It's here at Cars Plus. Call us at 477-7807 to schedule your appointment today. Terms and conditions apply. See dealer for details. Okay, so what are we thinking today? Uh, I just need a trim. Okay, well luckily you are in great hands. Mm -hmm. Perfect. The $1 stylist deal. Is that it? That's it. <laughs> or you could get a real deal. McDonald's buy one get one for a dollar deal is here. Buy one of your faves and choose another for just an extra buck. Choose from the Big Mac, filet of fish, quarter pounder with cheese, and 10-piece chicken McNuggets, but only for a limited time. And now time for our weekly Fanatic Zoom Zone segment where Dave Delgado catches up with local NFL fans about their love for the game and predictions for the season. <laughs> Dave Delgado here for this week's Fanatic Zoom Zone. With me, my brother, Andy Wheeler, representing the New England Patriots. Tell us when the love for your team first started. Back in uh, high school, I was uh, going to high school in New Hampshire, and if you're living there, you have to be a fan. It's just in the law, so uh, that kind of started. Went to a couple games, uh, and from then on, man, I was hooked. Game day traditions? Because the games are so early, grab my uh, cup of coffee, and then uh, flip through, see which games are on, uh, and then watch that. So I don't really have a tradition, tradition, but watching the football, uh, that is pretty much a tradition. Which team do you look forward to facing every season? That's kind of tough, but anybody in the division, obviously, and there's that really heated rivalry with the Jets, which has been pretty one-sided uh, for a lot of years. So it, it's not one of those like, oh, man, if we really, you know, if we beat these guys – Top two all-time favorite players? Uh, actually, favorite player of all time is uh, Steve Largent. Never played for the Patriots, but uh, growing up, uh, we moved around quite a bit, spent a lot of time in Washington, uh, and just fell in love with his play. Uh, and then for the Patriots, man, 
That's tough. You got to love Brady. I mean, I think he's the greatest to ever do it. And will you return your birthday shout outs from the Coldstone Creamery Birthday Club? We rely on each other to be there in the good and bad times. Parents rely on me for making sure that their kids are always in the best of their health. The community relies on me when emergencies strike. My students rely on me to move them higher in what they're learning. Our kids rely on us to provide them with all the support they need. For keeping us in touch every day. For every call and schedule I receive. And for every emergency I respond to. And with my need to respond in the timeliest manner. To keep my knowledge updated. For keeping us connected every day. We only rely on Docomo Pacific. The only way you beat six-month-aged cheddar toasted on the shell of a chalupa is to put it in this box. The Toasted Cheddar Chalupa Box is back for a limited time. Only at Taco Bell. And before we close out the news tonight, the latest round of birthday shout outs from the Coldstone Creamery Birthday Club. Happy birthday to a lot of birthday celebrants today. You guys, trust me, you are going to want to say happy birthday a lot because let's go. So, happy birthday to Isaias Kinata Rosalind. Happy birthday number 14 to our son. We wish you many blessings, laughter, and love on your birthday. Have a wonderful day, son. We love you. Say dad, mom, and your brothers, Jaron, Noah, Kaden, and Odin. Travis Minnow, birthday shout out to our son. You're the greatest blessing. May your birthday and all your tomorrows be blessed with everything good in life. There's no limit to how much we love you. Say mom and dad. That's a lovely shout out. James Corpus, happy birthday, James. We're so proud of all your accomplishments and how great you're doing in school. Awesome. We love you from your dad, James, and your siblings. Kairos Donato has birthday number two and happy second birthday, Anak. Your birth is truly an opportune time and you're a blessing. We love you. Say dad, mom, Gabby, and Gideon. And Barbara Navaretti and Tony Vigapria. It's birthday celebration for two sisters who are in two separate time zones that will always celebrate it on the same day as each other. Happy birthday to Barbara, who's in Olympia, Washington, whose birthday is on the 15th, and her sister Tony from Guam, whose birthday is today the 16th. Coming from the entire family, all of them, who love you so very much. We've also got belated birthday shout outs and we start off with Anthony Cabrera, who was born on the 6th. Happy birthday, Anthony. I love you from your honey, Sandra. Ricardo Leon Guerrero II, who was born on the 13th. Happy birthday to Ricky Boy. We love you so much and are proud of the young man you've grown into. With love, Nina, Ani, Kel, April, and Aliana. Lisa Guerrero Cruz, happy birthday to you and may the Lord continue to bless you and guide you today on your birthday and always. We love you now and forever. From the family and friends thinking of you always, Lisa was born on the 13th. Born on that same day was Noah Drake Chargloff. Happy birthday to you, wishing you only the best and always. We love you now and forever. From all your family and friends thinking of you always. Atisha Marie Espano Smith, happy birthday to you and it's birthday number 15. We love and miss you plenty from your Guam familia. Happy birthday number seven to our sassy diva, Aliyah Mari Mendiola. Love the family. Rollin Lubasan, who was born on the 13th, happy birthday. Love coming to you, especially from Callan. And also happy birthday number 34 to Benedict Joseph Kanata, born on the 14th. Happy birthday to our son. Have a safe and wonderful day from dad, mom, Janessa, and Jarena. Born on November 15th is Jolene David. So happy birthday, sissy. We hope you enjoy your day and we love, love, love you. No fewer than three times. That's awesome. And lastly, but certainly not leastly, also born on November the 15th is Kel. Happy birthday, Uncle Nino Kel. We love you so much. Say mom, dad, April, Ani, and all of your friends and family. Whew, happy birthday everyone. Remember, you can be part of the Coldstone Creamery Club by registering online on KOEM.com. That's all the time we have for us here on Prime Time. Thank you for watching. Have a good night and be safe.
All right, Hafiday, and welcome to another episode. And I want to thank you for watching wherever it is that you may be watching, whether it's online, Facebook, on the KUAM news page, or on YouTube, or on TV, on KUAM TV8 or TV11. Uh, thank you again for watching. And my name is Andy Wheeler. And uh, as you can see, we've got a full Zoom room here today. And I'm talking to these ladies. We've got Lori and Boss, we've got Tracy Anderson, and we've got Kelly Larson. Uh, the three of you basically are the entirety of Ohala Adoptions. So uh, ladies, Hafiday, and welcome to the show. Hello. Hey. Thanks for having us. Oh, my pleasure. Once I found out about this, I, uh, I, I felt that it was uh, you know, my duty to go ahead and uh, get set this uh, Zoom interview up so we can talk about it. And let's just go ahead and start at the beginning. Uh, Ohala Adoptions, uh, whatever it is, let's go ahead and tell us about it and a little bit of the history of Ohala Adoptions. Okay, so Ohala Adoptions is the island's first and only nonprofit adoption service. And it was a few years ago that we, um, Tracy, Lori, and I were talking about our experiences as myself being an adoptee, Tracy being an adoptive mother, and also Lori being a foster mother. And we felt like, we could do something to provide a service here that is not here or that was not here and that's so necessary and so we started talking about just like dreaming about oh what could we do or how could we set up an adoption service and it really was just um an effort of our hearts coming together we thought this is something we have noticed that could provide stability for the island for the children for the families both for families to place children and for families to adopt children. And so we decided that we would just start working and it was just little bit by little bit. It was just the three of us. It's always been just the three of us. We've had lots of help, of course, um, amazing help, but um, we're the ones that have been working consistently on this. And a year ago, we were established as the nonprofit that you guys know, Ohala Adoptions. And our mission has been the same from the beginning, and that's to provide options for families and to keep children out of the foster system if possible, where they can have as few transitions as possible because of the impact that that, um, that, that will have on ch a child, where if they're moved from one family and one group of people to another, it becomes very disheartening for the child. It causes lots of um, emotional pain that's unnecessary and that's avoidable. So that's why yeah. we're here, this is what we're doing. Uh, you hear that a lot. Uh, you know, a lot of people that I've, I've heard, uh, you know, the stories uh, that th these kids that do go into the foster system, uh, you know, kids, they need stability. Uh, they need that, that safe place. And uh, you of course want that to be their family. But if that family is changing every few months or, oh, this didn't work out for whatever reason, off to the next one, those kids just don't have that stability. And so uh, I think that, uh, you know, in the long run, uh, you see the effects of that. So ki giving kids this, uh, this stable home, uh, the fewest transitions possible, I think is pretty important to those children. And we feel really lucky here because an island family is very important to everyone, as we know. And... I think it's the island way that people take on their relatives' children, which is wonderful. And sometimes that works beautifully and sometimes it's really hard on families. I've had several people since we've started our organization come to me and say, you know, we're kind of at capacity. Our family's taken in so-and-so and so-and-so, -and -so, different relatives' children, and, but we don't wanna just let them go to who knows where. And I think that's where adoption comes in as a really good compassionate option for women to choose to place their child. And with us, they get to actually go through files that we have with pre-approved families that have been background checked and interviewed and know that they're a safe, good family and they can choose the family that they want to okay. place their child. So do you actually, you know, vet these, these couples, these families, uh, is that your purpose or is it just, kind of matchmaking the, the, the children to how exactly what, you know, I want to know basically what I'm getting at is uh, <laughs> the, the steps that you go through because like we help on adoption, like, well, that's a huge spectrum of things that you could be helping with. Yes, it's huge. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
We, we so. have families apply with us, um, mostly on island. We do have people off island, uh, many of which are from Guam, but serving in the military. They would like children from Guam, uh, keep them in the same culture. We have families apply to us. We each take them, go through them. We have a social worker that helps us. We go through uh, making sure all of their FBI background checks, their family uh, background, medical background, anything we can get, we go through all of these things and set up files. They write letters to a prospective uh, family that wants to place a child, so a prospective mother. And then when we have a client that comes to us in need, they go through these files and tell us what they want and what they're looking for. And they look through them and decide who they would like to help raise their ch child. And for nowadays, most children are placed in open adoptions. So that's kind of unfamiliar. I think a lot of people are used to the old thing of kind of a hush adoption where you don't talk about it or no one ever knows anything about their background and their family. And that's not the case nowadays. Most adoptions are now open to some degree where you have either letters, phone calls, um, and even personal contact with your birth mother or birth mother and father, and sometimes even extended family members. Get going with GTA Prepaid Unlimited. It's easy to load. Simply press star 488 pound, send, select two on your screen, and then load. And with fast LTE data, you're able to quickly connect and share to your digital world. Plus, with reliable service, you're able to connect with loved ones whenever, wherever. GTA, we start with you. Guam's auto appearance specialist, Elegant Reflections, has been providing the automotive industry with professional detailing and car care products at its highest quality from complete detailing, full interior detailing, exterior detailing, headlamp restoration, hand washing, seat and carpet shampoo, engine degreasing, undercarriage cleaning, paint sealant, fabric protection, paint oxidation removal, and so much more. Visit us at our new location. Call 646-5555 for an appointment. Elegant Reflections, Guam's auto appearance specialist. Over 20 years of experience. That's uh, important because adoption is such a big deal that you, you kind of want to be transparent about it. Uh, you kind of want to, hey, this is all the information we have. We're not trying to hide anything. This is not a back alley deal. Uh, so being transparent and uh, helping ease a lot of those concerns uh, for parents uh, and the, the mothers, I think, is uh, pretty important. and something that you do because, uh, you know, if you do decide, hey, I want to adopt, well, where do you go? That's, you know, I'm sure the first question that people do have. So, uh, Tracy, if you'd like to jump in here, um, if people are interested in adopting or uh, adopting, uh, how can they uh, go about contacting you or getting the process started? So we do have a website. It's ohalaadoptions.org. And um, that would be the first place that they could go or anytime we're available by phone or by WhatsApp. Um, do you want me to give the number now? Sure, yeah, or? throw it out there, yeah. Okay, it's, so it's 688-HOPE, and that is um, 4763. 4673. Seven, seven, <laughs> I always get that just, wrong. I'm sorry, Kelly. Just Glory. remember okay. hope. That's, yeah, that's what you oh, need. Hope. <laughs> um, and so those would be the two, I mean, you can reach out to us anytime. We're on social media, Instagram, Facebook. And um, there's an application on our website that you could fill out. Anyone can fill out, send to us, and we can move forward from there. Um, we do want to encourage people from the island. The reason why we started this was to help people here. This is, this is for Guam. We're here to help people here, women here, families here, and um, get children into stable okay. families for over families. Well, good. I think it's a great cause for these kids. Like I said, they need that stability. And <clears throat> if someone is starting to go through this process, uh, a mother that's expecting, um, this is a huge thing, not to be taken lightly. So... I'm sure you've had to deal with them, you know, maybe a uh, second thoughts, uh, uh, backing out or uh, whatnot. And uh, 
when they do contact you guys, this is not locking them into a contract or anything. This yeah. is just a, hey, this is how it goes. Yeah. Uh, let us walk you through it. If you want to back out, that's fine. Absolutely. Absolutely. So we do like to meet with whomever wants to talk with us, whether it's families or um, expectant mothers, talk to us. We can help you find whatever option works best. We, we try and counsel through all the, um, all the options so that uh, a mother can make an informed decision, that she can choose what, what she feels best about. And if that is parenting, then we can help direct her to resources that will help her to be a better parent. If that's adoption, we'll move forward with that. Good, so you're all to help in this process, which is not uh, an easy process to be taken lightly. And uh, you mentioned the website, so I went to uh, check it out here on Facebook. And uh, when you click on the link on Facebook, it pops up, says, we can help. And getting perspective is something that you all stress in Ohala Foundation or Ohala Adoption. So uh, a bunch of questions here on the website that you have, uh, and I'm sure you ask the uh, mothers and the families uh, when they do approach you about these things. So let's go ahead and uh, run through some of these, if you don't mind. Uh, first one is, are you mentally, physically, and emotionally stable enough to provide a steady home for your child, not just now, but in the future, you got to think long term. Uh, can you financially provide for your child? Uh, if you uh, parent, what relationship with your child have with the birth father? And that's entirely up to uh, the, the mother, correct? I mean, there's a lot to know here. So this is a, a pretty extensive questionnaire. So uh, talk us through some of it if you guys would like. Go for it, Kelly. Okay, so... Those questions we wanted to pose so that people could start thinking about, why am I seeking out adoption as an option for my baby? And those will help, those will help people maybe adhere more strongly to their resolve to start working on an adoption, getting a placement for their baby or for their child um, who, is, who is already born. That happens too, of course. Um, but just to give people a perspective, because once people understand what adoption is and what it can offer and what it isn't also, then a lot of questions and fears are dispelled. People, as soon as they're educated in anything, we, we can move forward with knowledge and power and we'll feel more, um, more grounded in our decisions. So we want people to come to our website ready to be educated and then ready to go beyond our website and educate themselves to know what is adoption? Is it a secret? No, it's not secretive. It's not shameful, but it's something to consider in a realistic way um, when wanting to decide what's best for a mother, for her baby, and for her family in general. Like what we don't, we don't want women to come to us secretly and then not tell their family members that they've decided to have their child adopted because that creates more problems for the mother. We want it to be as open and supported and loving as possible. That's ideal, right? right. It doesn't always happen that way. But our, when, we, when we've worked with women in the past who've wanted to keep it very quiet, we've encouraged them, lovingly encouraged them to share with family members and to have the support of their family because a mother carries enough burden as it is of having to go through the adoption process. And then for her to have the burden of her existing family, also to have those secrets with them, it's not healthy. It, it causes unnecessary strain on the mother. We can only provide so much, but it's the family that provides the most authentic and nurturing love. Right. Uh, it's again, something that should be very transparent, something uh, you, you should talk about it. And if someone does read these questions, they answer them and they're like, you know what, I am ready to be a parent, then excellent. Raise that child, love it with everything you have. Uh, but if, if you're having doubts, well, talk to someone about it. You ladies there can help uh, just to guide them. You're not going to tell them, yeah, you better put it up for adoption. You're just going to guide them no. to, the, the, to the choice that is right for them. So uh, you Thanks. mentioned there, Kelly, uh, you know, educating people on what adoption isn't. And so uh, we're going to talk about that when we come back, some of the misconceptions, some of the fears that people have. Uh, so we'll be talking uh, to the ladies here from Ohala Adoptions when we come back. 
MTO Maintenance will now completely sanitize your home, office, or business with state-of-the-art commercial sprayers. For over 30 years, MTO Maintenance has been committed to the health and safety of our customers. And now, more than ever, a clean home, office, carpets, and furniture is a necessity to our island. Give us a call today. Stay healthy and stay safe, Guam. Call 647-6861 for an appointment. It makes myself and it makes my team members very proud to work for an organization that has been on island for many years with its focus on reliability, dependability, and commitment to the communities that they operate in. Matson's a great corporate citizen to the community. We all benefit from any sort of environmental commitment we make. One of the ways that we do that is with our Adahi Utano program. There's action behind it, and so action breeds commitment. With the Kaimana Gila coming to Guam, this brings a new age and modernization to the island. It's exciting for me because it's a brand new ship and we can carry more freight into the island. It just shows growth for Guam and Micronesia. Matson would be nothing without its customers and we hope to continue to serve you for decades to come. Back to the show and uh, before we took the break, we were talking uh, about adoption. And, <clears throat> excuse me, Kelly, you mentioned uh, educating people, arming yourselves with knowledge when you go into this. And so I'm sure you've, in this day and age, there's a lot of misinformation out there, a lot of fears, a lot of concerns. So ladies, now, if we could talk about some of the misconceptions that you have, uh, some of the fears uh, that people have when it does come to adoption, whether it's adopting a child or giving up a child for adoption, uh, so any one of you, if you'd like to talk about some of those fears and misconceptions, please. Lori? I think Lori. one of the, the fears is that I'll never see my child again. And of course, there's women in crisis areas that maybe are fine to be able to place a child and it would be best if they didn't have contact with them again or with a family or whatever. But for most women... They want some kind of contact. They want to know that their child's taken care of. They want to do something. And so I feel very passionate about we want women to feel like it's their choice. They've done something. It's They haven't given a child away. They haven't left them somewhere. They, they've made a choice of this is someone I believe can give my child what I can't. And so then they work together with the family that they've chosen to figure out how they're going to... Um, work together and, and love this child and support this child, right? The child is number one in that situation. Is there heartache? You bet. There's always heartache. There's always doubt. There's always sad and scary things. And there's joy. Uh, it's a hard thing to work together uh, to find that good part, but everybody can do it as long as you know the child is healthy and happy. And I think that is one of the misconceptions is that it's, a, like you said, like a secret thing and it's not at all something that we can we can, you know, be grateful that someone has thought so carefully about their choices that if they can't parent, they can right. find someone who can. And I think it's pretty selfless. I mean, it's an unselfish act to, to recognize that, hey, you know what, maybe I'm not in a place emotionally, financially, physically, uh, to be able to give this child the best life they could possibly have. So, uh, you know, maybe I, I will find someone else that can give them that and know that, you know, hey, these kids will, will prosper with this other family. So uh, yeah, of course, like you said, there's heartbreak. Uh, it, it is tough, but it's um, definitely something that is uh, for the betterment of, uh, you know, all the people involved. So uh, what are some of the other uh, concerns, fears that you have that when people do approach you, you're like, okay, we get a lot of this. Here's to uh, kind of uh, dispel those fears. Tracy, do you want to take it? Um, one thing that Lori mentioned earlier, um, the culture, the island, they're a, a lot about family. Family takes care of family. And that's beautiful. That's amazing. And that would be, uh, you know, ideally the first choice. Where we come in would be if there's a situation where family isn't appropriate or cannot provide for that child. And I, we just want to encourage people to understand that it's not shameful. It's you're not um, giving up on your family member. 
And through the open adoption, there can be some kind of communication, whatever is decided between families, but that it's not a bad thing to help another family grow through a sacrifice that you're, you need to make for the betterment of the child. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I'm sure you, you've had people that, you know, maybe they, they thought, oh, of course I'm gonna have this child and raise it up. And then, you know, when you talk to them, they think, well, you know, uh, I think sometimes people forget that you have to think really long-term about this, uh, raising a child, you know? Uh, you mentioned all the things emotionally, physically, financially, uh, you know, all these other factors. And you, you just gotta really ask yourself, sometimes some pretty tough questions. So how do you help uh, these, these families and uh, the mothers kind of deal with those tough questions. And sometimes it's, it's pretty hard to ask yourself. So on our website, we have um, some links to um, support women who are thinking about becoming um, birth mothers to place like placing their child. And a lot of the birth mother support that's out there, I mean, there's plentiful um, information and um, resources for that. Um, but I really appreciate that there are like support groups and there are ways to match um, through those support groups with a woman who has also placed her baby. And then those two can support each other in their journey of healing after placement, or even in um, asking questions for the mother who's prospectively going to be placing. And um, one of our clients was able to do that. And she, um, was able to talk over all of those hard questions. Like, how do you feel 20 years after you've placed your baby? And do you have regrets? And what would you have done differently? Things like that. Women helping each other um, to get through those hard times. Because as we know, um, like what you said, um, placing a child isn't, um, isn't a, a date. It doesn't just end on that date when the baby is placed. It goes on and on. You continue to so to speak, place that baby into another's care. And you have to trust, um, birth, birth mothers have to trust that what they did was right, even though it feels so wrong, because biologically it's gonna feel terrible. Right. And, um, but there is healing and there is peace in knowing that you had looked at all of your options and thoroughly considered every option and that you had the, the power to choose for yourself what happened to your baby and who they went to. And um, then to have that open adoption, hopefully that would be um, available to as many mothers as possible. I mean, like what Lori said earlier, sometimes that's not possible, but um, that's according to the mother's choice, not because we would say it's not possible. Um, but just to have that openness, that connection, I personally am, um, I have an open adoption with my biological family. And as soon as I met them, and made contact with them. I was um, in elementary school when that happened. As soon as I met them, I felt um, I felt a really strong um, connection to, back to myself, to my adoptive family, even who I was raised by, to my adopt my my biological family. And we have on our website, and a lot of adoption websites talk about this, but the um, adoption triad. It's the triangle that each point signifies that there's an adoptive family, a biological family, and the adoptee. And that triad, as we all know, the triangle is like the strongest shape. <laughs> and, if, is there, and if a biological family, like staying with your biological family isn't an option, because that, uh, that is typically the strongest. But if a placement is necessary, and in my case it was, that triad, having that rebound and remade was hugely significant in my life. And I would want that for any, any adoptee to have, have that strength of um, the triad in their life. Well, good, when you met them, it was like you had that connection almost as if you were related. Hmm, imagine that. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we are gonna take one more break and we're gonna come back and close things out. And as it is now in this day and age, a lot of our events are having to go virtual so when we come back we are going to talk about your big virtual 5k that's happening now so keep it here we'll be back shortly the only way you beat six month aged cheddar toasted on the shell of a chalupa is to put it in this box 
The Toasted Cheddar Chalupa Box is back for a limited time. Only at Taco Bell. Are you looking to save? Here at Cars Plus, it's Black Friday every day. You'll love our entire Hyundai SUV lineup, like the 2020 Hyundai Tucson, ranked best compact SUV by J.D. Power in 2020. Drive home in your new Tucson starting as low as $158 per paycheck, equipped with Guam's only lifetime powertrain warranty. That's right, there's only one place to shop for your SUV this November. It's here at Cars Plus. Call us at 477-7807 to schedule your appointment today. Terms and conditions apply. See dealer for details. All right, back to close things out here with the ladies from Ohala Adoptions. Again, the website is ohalaadoptions.org. Uh, you can also find them on Facebook. It's O-H-A-L-A Adoptions. Uh, you can uh, call them. What was the number? Six, eight, eight, hope. Okay, yep. call the hope. Don't yep. forget that. I, I don't know what the numbers are, but just call hope. Uh, so before we uh, took a break, where I mentioned that you have a virtual event that is happening now. Uh, virtual 5K, talk about it, how it came about, how people can enter, and uh, what the uh, purpose of the 5K is. Okay, Tracy. So uh, we were hesitant to do a 5K. Uh, we were hesitant to do a fundraiser. We're, we're really not about the money aspect. I mean, we, we are a nonprofit. We do need some help to continue to function as an organization. But um, it has been a huge awareness campaign. We have um, contacted so many people that have given us such positive responses that um, we are super excited to move forward with it. So it's a virtual 5K, which means you can, on your own time, between today is when it starts, November 13th, to um, November 13th until November 21st. And you can do it in any way that you feel like you are getting the exercise, that you are out there, that you're being involved. You can run, you can walk, you can cycle, swim, hike, go to the gym, however you want to do and be involved and um, just share the message and help us to raise awareness and know that so that women do know that this is an option, that they can talk to us and we can help them to find the best thing for them. Yeah, uh, again, awareness and knowledge is one thing that uh, this group uh, you've been kind of focusing on. And so when the word got to me that this even existed, uh, I said, absolutely. I, I contacted you guys right away. Uh, Tracy called you yesterday and we, we set this up. So uh, getting the word out there for families, uh, for mothers that uh, might not know you're around. I know that you're, you're still growing. It's just the three of you. It's not like you have corporate headquarters where you've got a staff of hundreds working for you. Uh, it's just the three of you. So getting the word out there, getting more people involved, uh, getting more people just to know that you're there. And it is an option. Again, even if you don't plan on going through with the adoption process, just educating yourself about it and get getting rid of those 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 fears and those concerns. Again, this is not a back alley deal where you drive up and honk the horn and you know drop the kid off and split. This is something uh, that is taken very seriously. It's very transparent. Uh, and I wanna thank you ladies for all that you do. Uh, again, if people do have questions, if they have uh, anything they, they need from you or if they'd like to help out or uh, begin the process, how can they go about contacting? Please just call well, our Andy. phone number and we would be happy to talk to them. Like you said, we don't pressure anyone, so they don't have to know that they want to adopt or to place it, uh, their child to contact us. We're happy just to talk them through whatever, listen to their concerns. Um, that's never, never where we start with anyone. Is just here we go. Let's let's take care of placing this child. It's always about the person and the family that they're coming from and trying to work through those things with them. So, yeah. Great. Kelly. Did you have something? You say my name? I, yes. <laughs> oh, just cut out. I couldn't hear. No, just um, they can go to our website and start educating themselves. Um, OhalaAdoptions.org. And also, I would encourage people, we would all encourage people to start researching about adoption. There are 
thousands of websites and, and um, resources out there. Um, get involved and find out more about adoption, what it looks like, what it, what it feels like, all of, the, all of the important aspects of adoption. And well, then yeah. um, people will be much more prepared to um, move forward if that's what they want. And like Lord, call us. Yeah, even if you don't plan on going through the adoption process, uh, educate yourself. So if someone in your family is thinking about it, uh, you can tell them, oh, this is uh, where you should go. This is who you should call. Uh, I think everybody just having a, a decent grasp on uh, the whole process, I think, would benefit uh, the children most especially, but families in general. So, uh, Tracy, anything you'd like to add before we let you go? Yes, thank you. Um, I just, we are just the three of us right now, but we definitely want to expand and to get local people involved. This was something that was an idea that we generated, but we want this to be organic here for Guam. This is, and we want people to be involved. So we would invite anyone who's interested in helping to also give us a call and um, we can talk about how we can work together. And then my last thing is that I didn't, in my plug for the run, I didn't tell you to just go to our website to register. So any anyone that wants to participate in the run, you can go to the website and register there. Well, fantastic. Lori, Tracy, Kelly, thank you so much. Uh, ohalaadoptions.org is a website. Find them again on Facebook and give them a call at 688-HOPE. Ladies, thank you so much. Have a wonderful day. Thanks thank for having us. Thank you. It's a pleasure. All right. Thank you. And that is your episode, everybody. Thank you very much for watching.